Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Today's show is all about you. Still stuck in your past relationship and unable to move on? Does your long distant relationship need some sizzle? And finally, is there a best way to clean your toys? All this and more coming your way. Thanks for listening. I get a lot of emails looking for advice on just about everything, but I'm always excited to get questions that I can offer a definitive solution to. Although some of you are embarrassed to write me about lasting longer in bed, you should know it's way more common than you think. And there is a clinically proven solution, Promescent. Promescent is a quickly absorbing delay spray that was developed by urologists to address issues with premature ejaculation or PE. Make no mistake, this is not the old-fashioned delay spray that leaves you and your partner numb. It still allows your maximum sensation without any transfer to your partner. The makers of Promescent have been dedicated to helping men for years now, and they've taken the product through rounds of clinical tests that have proven its effectiveness. It is FDA compliant and has been endorsed by a host of medical professionals. Promescent is the real deal. Even if you don't always experience PE, Promescent can help you and your partner experience longer lasting sex, boost your confidence, and eliminate performance anxiety. Try it for yourself and see. Promescent is available without a prescription from a variety of retailers. For more information or to order, go to sexwithemily.com and click on the Promescent banner. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com. And when you get there, you know what you should do? You should subscribe to our podcast. It's right there on the right-hand side. Here's the deal. When you subscribe, automatically, we do two podcasts a week. And you'll just get them wherever you listen on your podcast app, on your phone. And then you never have to worry about missing a show. And uh, we love that because you don't ever want to miss a show because they're so good and fun and educational. Right, Anderson? And it's not like it takes up space or anything. No. They're just there. They're just there. So they're easily inconvenient. It's it's not like TiVo where like TiVo, like you you have only a 32% left. That doesn't happen. No, you can choose. And what I do is like if I go for a run, like I've subscribed to a few podcasts and then I download it at my house on Wi-Fi before I go for a run. Just in case you can't stream when you're out there. Yeah, because you you, you don't want to waste. People are confused. I think that you got to use Wi-Fi. No, you just press the download button and then then you delete it and you're done right and then if you don't listen for whatever reason for like you know 10 episodes or whatever it just unsubscribes Um, yeah yeah exactly Uh so easy so uh check it out we 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 do appreciate when you do that we actually had a fun episode this week um even though you weren't there it was sad but Mm we are recording sometimes at the gibson showroom beverly hills gibson showroom yeah guitars it's amazing we uh decoded people's text messages talked about guys who get noisy in the bedroom and you know i always say or who don't get noisy (laughs) I always had this thing about the guy who's like, uh, like, did he come or not? And he's like, uh, 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 you can't hear him and you don't know. Like, we want to uh, know. Maybe he's got He's called walls. the single grunt guy. I'm not the only one who's had an issue with this guy. We talk about that. What's proper etiquette? I guess you talked about I that last I just want him to make a noise so I know. What about that he... countdown? Is that good? You like to countdown? Ten, nine, eight, yeah. I'm going to blow my load. No. No, you don't like I that? I would just like to have some enthusiasm. I think guys train themselves and hold back. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we you just talked about promescent, right? Guys well, no, like to hold back. I'm saying, but when you, if you, if you jack it, oh, you're a talking noise, about noise. I'm talking about noise, holding making a noise, sound. holding back the noise. <laughs> it's the single grunt guy. We talked about that on the show. It's called Ghosting Threesomes and the Single Grunt Guy. You check out that threesomes. show. It's, you know what? It sounds like a Japan animation movie. Right? Ghosting Threesomes. Ghosting Threesomes and the Single Grunt Guy. It's on iTunes. Um, Anderson, it was fun hanging out with you. Yeah. We never got to have like a beer together. We totally sat next to each other drinking. I don't know what you're talking about. It was fun. No, I'm saying until this last past oh, until, weekend. Until it was really weekend. fun. Yeah, yeah. You, you are. You're a little bit of a light date. I got a little drunk, didn't I? I did. I got a little nauseous. I had two glasses of wine. Was it two glasses? That's all you had? It's not like you did. Did I seem drunk? You seem like maybe you were pre-gaming with some vodka, straight vodka in the parking lot. No? No. I always seemed drunk when I got there. No, not really drunk, but you were a little bit, a little drunk. You're a little drunk. I wasn't drunk when I got there. A little tipsy. Maybe I had a drink. No. No pre-game. No, no pre-game. No, I wish. You're just a little thing. Actually, I'm when you got up, when you got up to go get uh, drinks from the bar, uh, my wife leans over. She goes, "I didn't realize how little she was." 
<laughs> yeah. I'm like, you've met her before. She's like, yeah, but I didn't notice how little she was. Yeah, I'm little. Little lady. That's why you so need a, to your wife. What? a little dog. A little dog looks perfect on your little lap. I know. Tra- well, I know. Have we talked about the fact that you're having a baby on the show yet? I don't think we have. No. You can talk about it now, right? I'm going to be a man. Anderson's going to be a man. Uh huh. And he's going to have a child. I'm going to have a dad. I'm going to have a, ch- a child. I'm going to be a dad. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, I got to sit next to his lovely wife the other night and talk to her. And um, I was saying, you're going to have your hands full. And if you need me to watch Stanley, I will. I don't get how this is supposed to work, Emily, because literally I don't have any free time right now. I, I allow myself to watch hockey twice a week, maybe three times a week, and uh, take showers and go to the gym. That's it. That's Everything else is work-related. So what right. happens? Do I do the work with the child on my back? Yep. You have to you have to become a man and you have to realize what you can cut back on, how you can be more efficient. Granted, a lot of my um, work involves, you know, drinking and writing <laughs> and watching movies. So those things I guess I'm gonna have to scale back. All right, maybe I could do it with a child. You could you could do the watching the movie with a child yeah. where she, he or she naps on uh, your chest. It'd be so great if they came with mute buttons. I'm really worried about I the crime. Oh, pacifiers. Yeah. You'll be okay. Don't 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 feature trip on it. Okay. I think I'm I'm part, I'm happy. So I'm she's happy almost at the end of the trimester, uh, first trimester, and uh, there'll be there'll be news and whatnot. I'm sure coming up. Yeah. Soon. What what kind of baby you're having? Yes. What kind? What, Whether it's gonna be black, kind? white. Exactly. Mexican, we have no Asian. idea. That'll yeah. be interesting. Exactly. Um, but that was fun. We should do that more because you have about seven months, le- six months left. Yeah, to hang I know. Out. We should do that more. Okay. It's I would fun. like that. Yeah, Emma dropped a piece of silverware. <laughs> during the performance, and the performer actually uh, made note of it. He did, Mike Carano, like, our friend like, Mike Carano. Put did that show. anywhere. Yeah, you just put that anywhere. Right I in the middle. Try, of the well, <laughs> we were helping him in the front when he would it lose was, his crane of thought, and fun. we'd say, "Hey, Mike, it, you were talking about this." It was good time. You were you were very supportive and very I sweet, know, and I, I loved to see you there. As soon as I saw you there, I got even I got though happy. I seemed drunk. God, I what, was I drinking earlier? I'm giving you a little bit of shit. No, you're right. Um, I should drink more though. I feel like I I when I do, I'm. You, know, you actually said out loud, hashtag something, which is so not you, but like you sound like a millennial. Just now? No, at the show. You're like, oh my God, hashtag bald eagles. In the middle of the <laughs> yeah. show? Like that was your way of showing support at that moment is you said something. Because he, he said, said something funny and I hashtagged it that it he was said funny. He thought it was funny that so many bald eagles, uh, they're like on the top of flagpoles, like they actually have them up there and then uh-huh. actually ironically prevents real bald eagles from landing on the top of flagpoles. Right, right. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, hashtag bald eagles. I did not. <laughs> I, I know I said something like that, but anyway, <laughs> as long as that was funny. Oh, you're totally funny. That was a good night. Um, you were okay. my favorite person there in the audience, uh, by far and away. That makes me feel good because I know that you probably didn't like anyone there. I hate everybody. I know. And I even talked to your wife for a while and I felt like bad because I'm like, oh, I don't know if she doesn't even want to talk. Like, I know you guys probably wanted to leave, but it was really good talking. No, no, no. She was, she was fine. She was happy to be able to get to talk to you. All right. Um, okay. So we've got some sex in the news. Yeah. Um, Zeusk dating site. It's a dating survey reveals the biggest online dating turnoff. Okay. We all I like this. We all have our own deal breakers. We talked about this a couple weeks ago on your we show. We did. I asked you your biggest turnoff. Yeah. You had a hard time. You I don't, because I not. You landed on Persians, which I thought was really wrong. I did really not wrong. land on Persians. I, I, <laughs> think it's, I think it's true, though. It gets hard for me because I know that there could be something online that could fairly innocuous. People can blow up, and I'm kind of like, let me see this person, meet them in person, and see if it's, it's really a deal breaker. Right. But from bad shoes to table manners, bad table manners, uh, the wide range of personal no-nos, can often mean one girl's trash is another girl's treasure. Mm-hmm. So the study study surveyed more than 9,000 Zeus singles looking Zeus. at the extent to which poor grammar affected an individual attraction. And they say poor, uh, it's found that poor grammar is a deal breaker. And that survey found that nearly half of all singles consider grammar to be a deal breaker in online dating. Now, what about spell check? Yeah. Like, is that we're all moving too fast or they don't like LOL? They don't like acronyms? But like what – do they give examples? Because like a lot of time when I'm texting, I will be like uh, coming over soon. Yeah. You know what I mean? What they, without I the ING. The Even in my office, like I'm, prof- I'm the boss. I'll be like, hey, Madison, I like misspell 8 million things. I'm like, I'm not correct again. It I'm seems like if you, if you don't want to be too formal sometimes too. So like sometimes like, you know, the coming over or should have watched. Yeah. This is, I'm sorry. This is really distracting well, watching you do this. Well, okay, okay because kid? I got Stanley on my lap because I will never let go of him if I get Stanley here, the dog, if you've heard me talk about my obsession. But I, he does. I do have dog I'm hair on the my fence nose. of sh- whether I should bring him for you during the no, show do or it, do it, do it. I just fence. keep petting him. And just... You're petting your face, though, much more than you're petting him. I know because he's he's shedding up my nose, but I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I love him so much, and he's making – look how happy I am. But you remind me, like, of uh, like a – I'm going to sneeze, and they're stiff in my nose. It's okay. I love this dog so much. You're like a hay fever victim in the middle of like a, a wheat field. It's just because I keep petting them, 
and all the hairs <laughs> flying. Okay. Okay. Poor spelling is even a bigger deal breaker, not to be confused with grammar. So blatant spelling errors are turned off by the majority of singles, 72%. Even slightly more forgivable mistakes, like forgetting that space between a lot, will decrease response rate by a good 12%. If spelling and grammar isn't your strong point, get the dictionary out as if you have a dictionary. Um, it's okay to use full stops. Remember, we talked about this a lot too. Previous studies, I love that everyone's putting so much time and money into studying text messaging, but it kind of makes sense because that's how we all communicate. It's, yeah, it's a Previous language. studies found that using a full stop at the end of a sentence comes across as aggressive or insincere. A full stop. You mean a period. A period. Yep. But according to the survey, a uh, period at the end of a text impresses singles. Ooh. See, this is so confusing. Uh, with 93% saying they'd be happy if they received a text message with this proper punctuation. But explanation marks is next. First message sent with an explanation mark produces a 10% higher response rate. Just don't overdo it. You don't want to sound like you're shouting. That shouting is your default register. Right. Um, Women are more critical of programmer and the older you get, the less it matters, which I totally agree. Like, I'm not going to be like, I'm going to rule this dude out because he can't spell. Because I know we can probably spell. I feel like the older you get, the more, oh, you know what, with the ladies, the more desperate you get. But I feel like the older you get, the older you get, the more you should be uh, alert to somebody who can't spell. Right. Well, and I be just, down on them. I just say, if you, you have a pulse better. and a penis, mm-hmm. I'm in. That's what That's you what we say. say now. And a couch. And a couch. And a nice, a big, big TV. First of all, a lot. It is really stupid that it's not a word. I mean, it should be. And I feel like the Webster should get on board and yep. just make it a word. A lot. A, a lot. So it took me a while to do that one. But also, this is Zeus. And it sounds to me like Zeus might be a little bit... Uh, like higher echelon. Do you have to pay for daters? it, I think. I don't know. I don't know, maybe. but I bet you if they did the same study with Tinder peeps, it's going to be, be like, a whole different it. thing. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Um, I like, d- he spelled the word properly, so he's out. I know. It's true. Um, I think you're right. Zeus is more, there is more writing, there's more Zeus. emailing. Like, like Tinder's like a check. It's like a, I liked you, we matched, let's bang. Zeus, I haven't heard about them in a while. No, though. they've been around. Yeah, but they've they been show up on porn while. sites a lot. They do a lot of Uh-oh. advertising on porn sites. They do. Properly maybe spelled porn sites. Properly spelled porn. Properly sentence. spelled. Um, it also says that Match, though, ran a similar survey on 5,000 U.S. singles. And next to personal hygiene, the quality of a person's grammar was considered most important. 88% of women, 75%. So despite all the data in the world, uh, you can't. You could go on a date with someone who has perfect grammar and not find that spark. So go with your gut and enjoy yourself. Now, I love a survey as much the next per- as the next person, but it's all interesting. Uh, texting is important because it does get you in the door with someone. But if you suck in person, it won't matter <laughs> if your texting is like you get Nobel Peace Prize for your texting. Yeah. Seriously. Like, I dated guys that were amazing texters, and I just loved the banter. And then I'm with them, and I'm bored to tears. Right. And I'm like, can you just, I'll go to the bathroom, and you just text me? It's the same so, with, with anything. Like, I've, I've worked in radio a long time, and we've had writers on, like, you know, shows as guests. And we're like, oh, this guy wrote some really funny stuff. Can't wait for him to be a guest. No. Comes on, he sucks. I've used to, I, I actually... Had a lot of authors on too early on, and I was like, oh, Dale, you yeah. can write, but they you write for a reason. Yeah, and I'm a better talker than writer. I mean, I like to write, but I can't focus on it a lot. I bet you're, as you can know, you're great at both. Huh? I'm great at everything. Um, okay, so another survey. You give women, great email. I give great email. You do. I do. Have you guys signed up for my mailing list yet? On my website, <laughs> you should see the look. You should face. totally like, do that. What's wrong with you? For How not doing have you that? not? I <laughs> I give such good email. People compliment me near and far, worldwide, mm-hmm. about my emails. I don't want to brag. Just the right amount, too. Yeah, they don't talk, complain about grammar. No. They like it. They get laid. Okay, maybe. Uh, survey women more likely to compare current partners to past lovers. I found this very interesting. So sexual fannies, fa- fannies, hmm. fantasies, as we know, are perfectly healthy, but new research suggests women are thinking about real life memories and let their imaginations run wild. So a whopping 59% of women regularly pine for sex with their ex. Oh. Yeah. They're constantly comparing current boyfriends to past lovers, especially when it comes to their performance in the sack. Men, however... Uh-huh. Aren't so bothered about looking back on old times, and less than half the guys reminisce fondly about sexual liaisons with an ex. And only a quarter, 24%, would rather visit a past partner. And I was surprised by this. I'm shocked by this. Because I always, and this is my ego talking, but I have often ex boyfriends who are like, You're my spank bank, like uh-huh. top 10 blowjob. And I take that as a really as a compliment to my heart. You do? Well, are they lying then? Uh, what's, what's, what's more important to you, that being in someone's spank bank <laughs> or having them be a subscriber to your podcast? I'd much rather have you subscribe to my podcast. I'm just saying that these guys are like, you're you in my spank both. bank. But maybe I'm just, I don't know. But I guess guys don't want to think about it. I feel like the, there was a bunch of liars that they, uh, they talked to about in this study. 
In yeah. This. Well, they say that the grass is always greener syndrome is a significant driver of female registration. So they're becoming increasingly sexually assertive unless prepared to settle for second best. So women are always saying, oh, it was better before. That euphoric recall we oh, have our yeah. past relationship. But I think men do it too. I, you know what? As far as this study goes, I, I don't know that, if, speaking as a guy, I look back and go, oh my God, it was so much better back then. We all do but that. But you're going to remember it fondly. And it yeah. sounds like the study suggests they don't even really think about it. But I don't I think that's true. Nah. Have you ever heard that saying that you don't marry the person you have the best sex with? Well, cause, because they're they almost just say always that crazy. To let you down? I think because of the old cliche that like, you know, the, the crazier they are, the better they are in the, in the old bed. There. I don't think that's true. I don't know if it's true because you guys are all crazy, so it's hard We're to gauge. All, exactly. Yeah. Like on the spectrum of craziness. You guys really are all crazy. We are all you crazy. You understand Even that. me who you thought maybe wasn't crazy. Oh, no, maybe oh you're crazy. crazy. Yeah. But but I'm... I realized I'm that wild. you were crazy when I called you a crazy bitch on the show and you got very upset. And I'm like, oh no, she's really crazy. <laughs> well, dude, don't call me crazy bitch. When was that? Did we cut it out? Uh, no, no, we don't we cut it out. It we don't cut that out. That was a few months ago. It was ago. funny. I remember. No, I love you. But love I, you guys are all crazy. You really are. And I know it's an old cliche and but comedians say it all the time. But are all men crazy? Like, you guys are moody and you've got issues. Women are crazy. Pretty, and I'm just not even going to battle this right now because... People say this like women are crazy. Yes, women, we have moods, we have cycles. You guys have little land, land, landmines, and it's really difficult to gauge, even no matter how well you know them. Like, I, I know my like wife so well. Up. No, I, like, I'll still surprise Keep her and myself. Like, oh, my God, that upset you? Really? Right, right. That, that upset you to this point that you're that? Really? I had no idea. There's so many layers, though. Yeah. So many other things that it might be. Right, you're right. Uh-huh. It's hard. Crazy. Um, okay. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. So I've been giving sex advice for 10 years, and most sex takes place in a bed. So the bed is like the playing field, and you got to be comfortable in your playing field, right? That's why I need to tell you about Helix. Sure, beds are for sex, but hey, sometimes you got to sleep, and I want to make sure you're making the most of that too. So when was the last time you bought a new mattress? I've always dreaded the process. It's expensive. You have to drive from store to store. You got to test out the other dirty beds that other people tried. And one sales guy even got creepy and asked me to try out the mattress with him. (sighs) Thanks to Helix, those days are over. Buying a mattress with Helix is so easy. And you always hear risk-free, but this really is risk-free. They deliver the mattress to your house. You undo the box and it inflates itself like a magic trick. You sleep on it for 100 days. And if you don't like it, no questions asked. They come pick it up. They take it away, move on with your life, game over. And these really are great beds. I have one and I love it. And trust me, I know beds. And like I said, at the end of the day, there's no risk to you. These beds are super comfortable and they wouldn't give this guarantee if that wasn't true. They don't want to pick up your mattress. They know you'll love it. So for once, make something easy in your life. Make this easy and get a great, sexy, comfy mattress at helixsleep.com slash Emily. They'll help you create your own custom sleep profile and they'll custom make a mattress that fits your preference. Sounds expensive, right? Wrong. It's really affordable, much more affordable than those mattresses you'll see in a showroom. They cut out the middleman and the overhead and they can afford to do this for you. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Emily, figure out your profile and your custom mattress will arrive at your door in about a week and shipping is free. Plus, when you go to helixsleep.com slash Emily, you get 50 bucks off an already very affordable mattress. That's helixsleep.com, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash Emily. Once again, trust me, because I know beds. Okay, I have to introduce a new segment that we just started. It's called Emily, Please Tell My Partner. Mm. Because sometimes it's really hard to approach your partner about something you want in the bedroom. Like maybe you try to like bring up something that you want to change and it just hasn't quite worked yet and you're... You're at your wit's end. You're like, I've tried it. We went to therapy. We tried everything. And he or she just won't listen for me. Listen to me. So, for example, I asked on Twitter, what do you wish you could tell your partner about your sex life but don't know how? So, a few things we got were like, you know, you want your boyfriend to shave his pubes because they got in the way when you're going down him. Or maybe you wish your girlfriend would talk dirty to you. Um, I will call them for you. I will walk them through it. Don't worry. I am totally, I'm a professional. I won't do breakups. I might do proposals. We actually did one on the last show that we just released, the Gibson show about ghosting. And what we did was, what did I do? I like think I, I called a guy whose girlfriend was like, Emily, I do not, I will not have a threesome. Like, I love him. We've been together two years. He won't let it go. Can you please call him? So I called him and he was totally cool with it. It went, went really well. I feel like I saved their relationship. And At he, first, he was, did he think you were like calling to say, hey, it's Emily? He was like, hey, oh, Emily. she listens to your show. Well, yeah, I'm she like, likes hey. threesomes. He's like, oh, man, it's all working yeah, out. Yeah. And I'm like, sorry, not so what, fast, took a buddy. Left turn on him. I'm like, your girlfriend really likes you, except for this. Boom. So if you have anything that you're just, God, you're at a roadblock with your partner, email me feedback at sex with Emily, and I'll help deliver the news in a really 
really classy way. Don't you wish you had a microphone, though, in their house for after the call? Yeah. He was How like, that hey, went down? Yeah. He's like, never a threesome. What the hell did you just do to me? I know. But he, was, he seemed nice. I don't know. We got we to do follow-ups, too. We should do like a follow-up. 10 years later. All right, I like this. So email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Right. Okay, now we're on to emails. Thanks for emailing me again, feedback at sexwithemily.com. I love hearing from you all, and I read your emails, and it just, honestly, I want to just take a moment to thank everybody for listening to the show for 10 years and for subscribing, because, you know, when you subscribe, that really helps the show. And we were number six in all of iTunes. Number six. Like, it was like serial... Sex with Emily, This American Life. I bragged and to I people. thank everybody. I bragged to like my mom about that. You did? I'm like, uh, that, you know that Emily girl? You know, I've think I do about? The side? Yeah, yeah I, work, I work on our show sometimes. She's number six on all of iTunes. What'd well, your mom say? She said, what's well, iTunes? <laughs> did she? <laughs> she probably did. That's cute. My mom would say, that podcast? I've heard of cereal. That's what my mom would say. Oh, I'm glad you bragged about it to your mom. You I should did. be proud. This is you, baby. This is all you and my listeners. So I, we are nothing without you. So Can I just you. say this? Yeah. The last two hours of my life, maybe two and a half hours, I've just been miserable and angry and upset because, you know, a lot of stuff's going on yeah. around here. And uh, it all just washes away. Ah. As soon as we start doing this back and forth, and I, I'm, I'm with you on the show, I just, it all goes I love away. that. So, I love really that does. you can have a little bit of preview for an hour. And I like to think that that's what the listener gets, too, when they listen to you. Yeah. Like it just, they, they feel better. <sighs> yeah. I hope so. That is my goal. I do not want you to leave this listening feeling worse. I'm yeah. trying to help you all. <laughs> That'd be a weird. Especially Anderson. A weird angle. Like a weird but service. Like, I love the show, but then I want to kill myself. Every time I'm done, because, you know, I watch movies, and like after the movie, I'm like, oh, I feel so much worse about everything now. You know what I mean? Right. That's a bad service. That is a you bad service. You want to be a good service. I want you guys all to feel really inspired to go out and um, have sex after this. Have really good <laughs> sex. That's yeah. what I want. Okay, so thanks for emailing me um, and including your name, where you listen from, and how you listen in your email and your age. Okay, Emily, I love your podcast, and despite what some people think is fast talking, I listen at 1.5 speed just perfectly. Wow. That is an impressive ear. I do talk fast. This is a lady? Right now. Um, yes, it is. So, I find the pace entertaining and fun, so just keep being you. Thank you. A lot of people have been saying that lately. Just be you. You know, we all, as artists, you die yourself. As mm-hmm. a, but thank you. I'm just going to talk a lot faster. You want to you say something like to somebody like back in the office? Like, hey, you hear that? Hear that? No, yeah, no, it's that I also know that sometimes I get all ramped up and yeah, I try do. to slow down because I think it can be sort of hard well, to what I'm do saying. With you if you if I hear you say something and it was kind of hard to understand, <laughs> I'll mumble. repeat it for you or I'll, I'll say, excuse me. Right. Pardon, I appreciate pardon me. that you offer that service translator right. for my listeners. Right. Um, I've got a question about sex toy hygiene. I know you use a lot of them and keep them around, but I'm worried about them remaining clean and sanitary for use. What's the best way to store and clean them? Also, is there a type of material material that's bacteria resistant? I've got this down. Yeah, you do. I'm 27 and I haven't had sex in a couple of years, and I'd like to start experimenting with myself, but I've never actually put a toy inside of me because I'm concerned about yeast infections. I used to be in balance. I don't want to mess it up. Also, uh, I rules. She what? follows the rules. I live in LA. I'm single. I'm straight. I'm 27. And I listen to iTunes. Thinks that was our rules. I rules. These are my rules. I ask people to. I hate to say rules, but they ask people to give me their name, how they live, and where they live. And uh-huh. she says, "Now for the rules." So oh, thank I you, guess. CJ. You're awesome. She's a good rule follower. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is a great question because not enough people know that they need to clean the toys every single time after use. In fact, we just posted a video about that today. What it's about cleaning your toys. It's kind of funny if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Emily, uh, which is Sex with Emily. It's all on my website. Um, because you really do. People just think like, oh, it's just sitting there, but it gets bacteria. Yeah. Um, you should be cleaning after. You can clean it with like a damp cloth, warm water, and soap. You can buy special wipes. You can buy unscented baby wipes. I'm I'm loving Wee Vibes sex toy cleaning sprays because I have it by my bed, and you just spray it on your toy, and you can just wipe it off with a towel, or, and it, um, it, you don't have to put it under the water. So like you can just like go, go to bed, clean it, put it back in your drawer. It's right. awesome. No trip to the sink. No trip to the sink, which you know is a pain in the ass, right? Um, so just make sure there's no dust, residue, or debris. And also, like I said, our latest sex tip video is how to clean up after sex toys. As far as storage, okay. I have spent way too many hours obsessing, dreaming, fantasizing, sketching plans to store my toys. Um, I've done the hanging racks. I've done the plastic shoe holder things. Um, I mostly just, I have too many though. Not many people have like, 200 they're trying to store. I understand this. So I keep them wrapped like in my drawer. 
I have a bunch of drawers. I have like a storage bed and I put, I wrap them in a towel to make sure they don't get like damp in the drawer. Like, so I clean them and wrap them in a towel. That's what I do. If you're concerned, you can also buy a joy box. That's J O Y B O X X. It's like a special, um, antro microbial material. Uh, It's a specific, uh, it's a box specifically designed for toys. It's ventilated. It has locks and it's PVH, PBA and phthalate free. So no cancer for the vagina. No cancer for the vagina. And it automatically like, will um, just self clean it almost. Yeah, because they have those for like toothbrush heads. Yeah, as that's well. what it is. That's what it it's is. Like the what same kind of blue light. Exactly. Thing. But I need six of them. Yeah, and you need more than that, I would think. What about a dollhouse for your sex toys? That'd be creepy. Like a big so dollhouse, and like each room's got its own little sex toys in it. That'd be creepy. I, that would be creepy. I mean, I've. It's so hard. You know what else is hard? All the chargers. Yeah. So now I go through when I get in my obsessive, I label the charger so uh-huh. I know which toy it goes to. With like a label gun. Yeah. I, I'm obsessed with label maker because I believe that the label maker will someday make me super organized. One like day. if it's got a label on it. You need to get one of those signs that one day I'll get organized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. You are freaking out, lady. I just, there's a lot of hair going yeah, on. It really is. Can I take them home? And- no, you can't. Okay. She looks like a snow globe. I wish take pictures. I'm like literally <laughs> this. Okay. Uh, okay. Emily, my girlfriend, I've been dating for three years now. And for the past year and a half, she's been working overseas. Recently, I went up to visit her for two weeks after not seeing her for three months. Of course, I came up thinking we'd have sex and reignite our passion, but she has been continuously shutting me down. Uh She insists there's nothing wrong and the affection is still there, but she simply doesn't feel like having sex. I'm worried that I'm the problem and she won't admit it. I've tried everything. Gave her a massage. I did the dishes. I work out more frequently. I tell her how beautiful she is. All this, but no matter what I do, she doesn't even approach the subject. It's been like this for the past nine days. I'm only here for a few more. He's visiting her after not seeing her for months. I've just stopped trying to get her in the mood completely. I'm trying to stay positive and not talk about sex because I'm afraid that will only make things worse. Please help me. So my question is this. How do I get her to want to have passionate, steamy sex like we used to? Answer D. Do we know where she's been for three months? Well, what, what she's overseas. Uh-huh. Um, in Paris? Italy? No. I know that Paris isn't in Italy. I was I don't naming know. two separate locations. I get it. I get it. I don't know where she is. Three years long distance overseas. I don't know if they have plans to be in the same place. What I don't know if it's always been long this, distance. Em. What? You know the answer to this, right? My gut tells me if you're in a long distance relationship, you've been, you've been together three years, you haven't seen her in three months, and you're with her for for nine days, and she's not having sex with you, something's up. But D, it is not you. Because the way he's talking is, what have I done? What can I do? What can I do? And maybe she's not into the relationship anymore, but there's nothing you can do. It's not about that. So that my gut is that something's going on. Yeah. Is that what you're telling me? I'm um, afraid there's another penis. It really sounds like it. There might be another penis. And there- she doesn't have the heart or the guts to actually make the big move, which is break up. But she also doesn't want to think of herself as a slut because a lot of girls are like that. And she can't be a girl who's having sex with two different guys. So she feels like maybe she can still continue this relationship as long as there's no penetration. Who knows what's going to happen with the other one. But this sounds like there's another dude. <sighs> there's something. There's another something going on. Yeah. Maybe a vagina. Another vagina, who knows? But typically, after being apart, there should be more passion right away. Like, usually, like, I've been along this, that's the best part. You miss each other, or at you least rip each other's straight, clothes off. A straight answer. Exactly. So, I don't know why you won't, I don't understand either why you're not talking to her about it because you're afraid she's going to shut you down. Guess what, buddy? You're already being shut down. You've been there for nine days and you're not having sex. Sex is the glue. That's what's going to keep you guys together, especially in long distance relationships. Because what people don't realize about LDRs is that most of the intimacy building and the maintaining of it takes place while you're apart. So it's like you're Skyping, you're FaceTime, and you're keeping connected. So there isn't like an awkward reentry phase, phase, which this might be if it was two days, right. but not nine days. That's a long distance um, relationship. It's not a strange religion. LDR, exactly. So I get that you're blaming yourself, but, you know, again, there's got to be something going on. There could be another penis. There could be medication, low self-esteem, and maybe the connection's gone. Maybe there's someone else. Talk to her about it. I know. It sucks. I visited people and not wanted to have sex with them after I got there. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, how long? You just, sometimes you just, sometimes you just know. You see someone and you're like, I'm done. gone. Has that happened to you? Yeah. Like that. It's happened to me on both sides too. Like I've been the guy where it's like, she's like, yeah, it's done. Yeah. And I've gotten to the place where I look. You're like, like, oh my God, I I can now put my penis there. Yeah. I get it. I feel like she's a family member, not like a a partner. The thing is, it feels like it's happening like that, but it's probably been building for a while, but it could. So maybe she saw you and she thought, you know what? 
I, I'm not into this anymore, but it's not because of anything that you are doing per se. So right. I think even if it's uncomfortable, you like, I get why it's uncomfortable. You don't, part of you wants the answer. Or part of you might be afraid of the answer, but you have to talk about it. Sex is so important for every couple and especially long distance relationships. You need that physical, physical in- intimacy to connect. So get the answers before you make another overseas trip. Yeah. And we don't know, we don't have the answers. So we don't know if this is like, yeah. I've got a, a light at the end of the tunnel. She could be moving back to your town after a few more months or right. it's just, I uh, had a really good friend who she had like a three year long, long distance relationship. She actually got engaged to the guy. He lived overseas in, in Europe and she lived over here and like, you know, she, he finally came out to visit and she's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. What yeah. I? She was making herself unavailable on purpose by dating a guy. That's right. A not, lot of people do that yeah. because they, I, I've done that too. Where I'm like, they're ideal, long distance. Exactly. You can pick and choose, you but that's kind of want. a flip, another side of another reflection of commitment issues. I don't have those anymore. You got to come. What? Not really. Good. No. Okay. Good for you. So, I mean, I almost got a dog. I mean, that's major. Okay. So, dear oh. Emily, a little background on me. I'm a 32-year-old black male from London, England. I work as a physiotherapist and I'm also an aspiring fitness YouTuber. My last relationship was about six years ago. We were together for seven years until she broke up with me and my world was turned upside down. Fast forward. 2016, I finally got to a place where I'm over that relationship and doing well in my career and other aspects of my life, apart from my love sex life, which is non-existent. In fact, I'm completely hopeless with women. I have no idea how to talk to them. I'm very socially awkward and I have no confidence. I feel so unattractive. My self-esteem is at rock bottom. I just don't know what to do to get out of this rut. I'm beginning to feel that I'm destined to die alone. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Love the show, by the way. I've been listening for years. Key, kind regards, Sean from London. There's a lot going on here. Um, so one, past relationship. Something messed him up with the ex. Taking him six years to get over it, and you haven't completely recovered. And so if there was some trauma related to that, just because you think you're over it, you might not be. Mm-hmm. It was some kind of bad ending. Confidence. He's, You've got this confidence thing. Again, I don't know if it's from this relationship, but you're also a fitness model and you're on YouTube. So I'm wondering if there's something, you know. A little body dysmorphia perhaps? Yeah, something has to do with his, uh, yeah, his occupation, has to do with his self-esteem that you'd already be beating yourself up if it wasn't about women, that you need to, you know, we've done tons of shows on building confidence, but really that should be your, um, your priority is, you know, without working on your confidence you really don't and i feel like it'd be an easy fix it would cost a couple bucks for this guy but he just took like a week-long trip slash vacation call it for work if you like uh and come out here to the states black dude with the english accent he's gonna kill it i know with the, he's got, probably got a good body and he you know he's doing the youtube get fit thing oh you're right go to, come LA. out here go to a yoga class or two you'll meet ladies like oh the first God, day you're here yoga yeah they're crawling with and me. they will love you just make sure you open your mouth and speak that uh with your, your velvety tongue it's so true like they I, I almost went out with this british guy last week and it's like something about black british dudes too they're <sighs> so cool yeah so cool you're right he should just pull a geographic yeah just use some miles if you got miles on a card or something come out here just for a week though we don't want you to stay out here because there's too many right, people just out for here. your confidence but then again it could be like filling that empty hole if he doesn't feel good about himself it doesn't matter how many women want to bang him or suck on his penis mm-hmm. he still doesn't feel great about himself yeah. because he's feeling hopeless he's gonna die without alone which is not true honey you know that you're not gonna die alone it's like what so, ladies think hey, guys are supposed to think I that know. way i don't know why he's catastrophizing this so you know it's like a muscle. It is rebuilding a muscle, the dating muscle. And it's practicing approaching women, talking to women, and just being comfortable in your own skin again. Like if he's, he's a builder, a bodybuilder. Body so uh, if, if I was a client of yours, he's also, t- I think he said he's a fitness trainer, and you were trying to rebuild muscles that they lost, what would you tell him? You'd say hit the gym, work slowly, build it up. And I'm telling you that you got to build these muscles again of dating and socializing and putting yourself out there. Like I always say, start a conversation with a stranger, just start practice talking to people and you, you'll forget that you had this kind of anxiety once you just do it. And maybe a little therapy. A little therapy. Deeper, there's a lot going on here. There's the X, there's the body image. So I, yeah, huge fan of therapy. Huge. Um, yeah. Is there a band called therapy? I feel like there should be. I don't know. There should be a band called Therapy. I don't know. There should be. There should be Huge a um, fan of therapy. There should be a village called Therapy where just everywhere you go, like 7 Eleven, they're like, How are you feeling today? Oh, that'd be so great if just like the guys that you, like, instead of making you feel more angry and stressed, they're like, actually nice and they make like, you feel good. How are you good. doing? How are you feeling today? You sure you want that Kit Kat? I got a couple of places like that where I go, I got frequent and they're very, very nice. Like they the always bars? hand me a whiskey. <laughs> but yeah, they're really nice. They're like, happy to see me. Everybody knows your name. Yeah. Um, do I have places like that? 
Huh? I don't know. No, Here, you, you make me feel good oh, most of the time. That. Yeah, you walk in, Dr. Drew's like, oh, Emily, hey. Yeah. Yeah. And it's he's a, like a therapist, right? Yeah. Except you administer therapy to him. That's yeah, some, sometimes. Yeah, I I've do seen my best. It. It's impressive. It's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hi, Emily. I'm a huge fan and I will never stop supporting you. Wow. That's a huge statement. I love it. I'm 21 year old female in a relationship with a 22 year old male. Uh, she's young. She doesn't know. She'll stop supporting She'll me. She'll stop supporting me next week. I've been dating my boyfriend since Halloween, since doing Kegel Camp and listening to you <laughs> every day, as well as getting used to each other's bodies. We've been exploring in the bedroom and having great hot sex. This is my issue. He doesn't shut up. Normally, isn't this the other way around? I'm not the best at dirty talk, and he likes it when I talk wait, wait, dirty. I'm not the what? Oh, I'm, I'm not, not the, the best, best at, dirty, at talk. dirty talk. So he won't shut up in the bedroom. He likes it when I talk dirty, so I'm working on it, but he won't shut up when we're having sex. He makes comments like, do you love me? How much do you love me? Over and over and over nice. again. And he repeatedly asks, what do you want? How much do you want this dick? How much do you like it? Oh, no. I have no clue what to say to these. How much? Terrible. Like, how do I answer the how much questions? And, like, how do I respond just, in a sexy way? She should just answer three. Three. I want, I want three, I want three much. dicks. Yeah, three much. Seven. He's one of those. Um, he's one of those that has a big ego and constantly needs it stroked. Oh, it's a really And his small. penis. When small. I don't answer, he'll keep prodding. If I weren't riding him, maybe he'd make it less awkward. But is this normal? He's had many more partners than I have, and I'm aware men want to feel masculine, and I don't want to make him feel bad, especially in bed. Any rate, help. Any help is greatly appreciated. Thanks a ton, Lauren. Love Lauren in My New York. God. My God, this is a tough one. Because, you know, it's funny, Em. We don't get like a I, – I mean, there's plenty of books out there, but it's like you kind of learn as you go, and nowadays you learn from from porn. Right. And, like there is no like right and wrong way. You kind of got to do it yourself. It's almost like group. dancing. It is like a dance. And this Sex guy like dances dance. terribly. He's dancing like. terribly, he and you want to step like on his foot. Horrible middle-aged white man. Right. Exactly. Um, I think she's got to talk to him. You got to talk to him, sweetie, outside the bedroom, Lauren. Um, you just got to be like, babe, I love you. I love your penis. I'm so attracted to you. Sex is great. But I realize that when you're talking to me, yeah. in the moment, it's really hard for me to like be present and I need to be focused to enjoy sex and have my orgasm. And um, I got to focus my attention on my body and your body. And when I'm trying to answer your questions, I lose track and I can't enjoy sex as much. How would you relate to that if you were a guy? Well, she's, she's riding them, right? She's riding him. He's like, baby, how's my dick? How's yeah, my dick? How much do you like, want more? You know, kind of support herself Put by putting him. her hand over his mouth and kind of. Don't speak. Or be like, hey, I'm, I kind of want to try a little, uh, a little bit of the old S&M over there. Uh, I'm going to wrap your this, mouth in, this ball in duct gag. tape. Let's start with the ball gag. Exactly. That's not a bad way to go not into terrible. it. Not terrible. Um, tell him that it turns you on when you hear things in bed, but you're losing your orgasm. I don't think any guy wants you to lose your orgasm. And um, I think you just got to find some middle ground and find out what he wants from you. You're saying that he wants you to talk back and talk sexy? Maybe he just wants to talk. He doesn't even realize. He's. Don't you feel like during sex sometimes you do things you don't realize you do? Like, yeah, has your part ever been like, do you know that when you orgasm or when you do this? No, he no. might not even realize he's doing it as much, at least to the degree to which he's doing it. So, um, you know, I would just talk to him and say, you're doing this. You got to be kind, gentle, and direct because obviously it's driving you insane. So... So I would say I, you got to talk about it. But. I almost understand the whole sadomasochist, like, uh, or the S and M, like, control thing, because this would be a great, and I'm not kidding, this would right. be a great reason or excuse to kind of go down that road. Like, she's like, "All right, tomorrow night when we have sex, I'm in total control. You only can do what I tell you." She to could do. if you're. She's in a dominating lord. If you're into that, that's not a. You just get him like a ball gag, or you get not even a ball- the ball gag. Because as soon as he starts to talk, he's not allowed to. You hit him. Yeah, yeah. Say so no, speak, no talking. Yeah. Yeah, I had a boyfriend who tried that with me once, but that was like not in the bedroom. Out. He was like, just don't talk after eight o'clock. What about this? <laughs> after eight o'clock was like, his like downtime yeah. from M? I'm like, no, no freaking way. I'm just getting started at 8 p.m. This won't work. He was like a real subscriber. Like, he was a boyfriend. And he couldn't unsubscribe because you were right there. He could not unsubscribe because I was like, so we should talk. And he's like, um, it's 8.01. Oh, we should talk. All right, what about this? And I'm not kidding either with this. Like, what if she said, this gets a little dicey, but I mean, if it's important to her, she's young and this isn't going to be yeah. the guy anyway. So, <laughs> You say, uh, like, hey, maybe tomorrow night we'll have sex just the way you want to have sex. I want to see what that's like. You're right. in complete total control. Like, you tell me what to do, you know, with some limits. And then the next night maybe it could be her turn. Like, she gets, yeah. and it's not totally dominatrix style. It's just like, no, this is how I want to have it. It's quiet. Right. Quiet. I'd like to have quiet sex. Quiet sex. There is quiet sex, like no, slow no, no. sex. 
But I think you threaten it uh, when she, if she threatens the uh, the orgasm, that's going to be like yeah. Right there. She's like, you know what? I like it, but babe, I've got this deal. Women, it's true. I but can't the truth come is, when, you talk. You when there's distractions, I can't come. Like if there's shit going on, bells ringing, like my fire alarm's going off. Uh, <laughs> Which it does beep sometimes. I bet it does. I just pulled it out of the wall. Um, of course you did. <laughs> I should fix that. Yes, you should. Or die in a fire. But um, yeah, it's hard. Women, you know, it's like a precise science that like, you just got to have everything right. So, um, okay, Lauren, let me know how that goes, okay? I don't want to ruin your relationship, but you think you got to talk about it. I, it's driving me crazy now. I can't orgasm when you talk. Should right. I do the trick? Done. Yeah. Done. If he cares about your orgasm. And you can say that over lunch. Yeah, totally. Oh, it's great. I'm going to get the Reuben and... Uh, Hey, don't talk when I have sex. Okay, Anderson, this is all we got time for. It was good to see you. What's going on with oh, you? Is it? Yeah. Uh, what is going on with me? I don't know. Same old stuff. Cinematics is uh, still kicking strong. How is Just Cinematics? Week 13, coming up on week oh my 14. God. Some of the really good movies are starting to come down the pipeline now. So I got some really fun ones to talk about uh, on Cinematics. You just type in cinema and then it'll pop up there on the old iTunes. Okay. It's and my after serious disaster? film. Pod, Serious podcast. film podcast, and then yeah, after disaster, strong as ever, uh, doing it with uh, Mike Carano and, and uh, we love him, Tyler White. We do it usually from the Hollywood Improv once a week during off hours, but right? we do it from the main room into a, to nobody, which is kind of fun. That's kind of spooky. that is fun. Yeah. I love that main room. And then of course the Film Vault, which is the uh, the actual so money making show that I do, where we do top five list every week, as well as a couple of recent movies or movies that are in theaters now. With well, Paul I'm Brian. Well, you all listen to podcasts, so you should listen to Anderson's too, because. Uh, I'm sure you probably already do. You know, I, we were we all the other night at the improv. This guy's like, "Hey, I uh, what do oh, you say? Yeah. I heard you on. I've heard about yeah, you on the found, after disaster. You found out about your show from me. Yeah, so, yeah. look at this. Look we're at like that. helping each other because I think there is a lot of uh, crossover. There's not a lot of crossover with you and I. There's starting to be, but I with Loveline obviously I have a lot of crossover. But with you, it's like a, it's a very large audience, and I think but, a lot of those people would also like to hear about movies delivered in a fun fashion. I would like to hear about movies because yeah. I'm going to start seeing movies this year. It's already that's April. what you've been saying <sighs> since I met you. Uh huh. This month is all about it. Um, movies. So that's what I got to say. So thank you, everyone. I love you. And thank you for, um, God, making our podcast a top podcast and for number, supporting the show. Number six. Yeah, yeah. And you know what it is, though? It comes from people who subscribe. So the more you just, it's easy. You click the button. That will, that will help us stay there and um, keep the show going. So thank you, Anderson. And uh, thanks so much for listening. Was Oh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat at Sex with Emily. Anyway, thanks for listening. A lot of listening. demands. A lot of demands. <laughs> thanks for listening. Was it good for you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. You going to Snapchat your boob? I might Snapchat my boob. Okay. I have a question for you. Would you go to the grocery store and pick out just one type of food to eat for every meal every day? Of course not. So why would you limit yourself to just one type type of sex toy? That would be my biggest nightmare. So think of adamandeve.com like a sex toy supermarket. They have all my favorite high quality brands like WeVibe, Magic Wand, Jimmy Jane, Pure Lube, and more. And to make it easier to stock up on an arsenal of toys and lube, the folks at Adam and Eve have set me up with a special deal for all of you. Go to adamandeve.com and for a limited time, you'll get 50% off any item. But that's not all. How about this? When you select your one item at 50% off, you'll get three free adult DVDs, you know, for a little inspiration, plus an extra free gift. And free shipping on your entire order. They do not gouge you with shipping, with shipping, because that's what I hate. So check out adamandeve.com today for this special offer. 50% off one item. Type Emily for the offer code to check out. And when you do, three free DVDs, free shipping, free stuff. Use code Emily at adamandeve.com. By now, you all know me pretty well. You know I love new experiences, but I have my favorite things that I always come back to because I know I can trust them. I can't think of a better example than the magic wand. If you've been listening, you might remember that I actually had a hole drilled in my nightstand, so my magic wand was always plugged in and ready right when I needed it. That's a pretty big commitment. And I thought it was pretty ingenious. But anyway, before you go destroying your furniture, consider this. The trusted magic wand is now available in a rechargeable version, delivering all that power of the original plus the mobility of a completely cordless design. The Magic Wand Rechargeable also features four intensity levels and four great vibration patterns. For more than 30 years, a trusted Magic Wand from Vibratex has been just about everyone's go-to massager, from its perfect size to the high-quality construction and materials. It's no wonder why the Magic Wand is considered the Cadillac of all vibrators. If you don't own one yet, 
Don't live without the magic wand another day. And if you do own one, you need to try the rechargeable. Go to sexwithemily.com and click on the magic wand banner to order yours.